G'day, Jojik here. And it's another... Oh, this watch in the box doesn't fit. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, more. Not that we're a super large box, it's just... Uh, I was zoomed in. Okay, so... What be this? This looks like... I'm pretty sure this is going to be a couple of items that I am buying people for Christmas as well as one item for myself. So, it'll be interesting to see what it is. If I can get it out without cutting my fingers off. Which is actually more of a problem than you might think. Booyah! Yoink! How was that, see? I opened it from the bottom so you wouldn't be spoiled. Taverna! Oh yeah, now Taverna is a very interesting light worker placement game. I'll get to that in a sec. Codename, this is a Christmas present. It's a, a cute little party game. Very simple, but yet quite fun. Basically you, uh, oh, I'll talk about that in a sec as well when I open the box. And, ooh, the latest Tash Kalar expansion, Never Void. So I now I'm completely up to date on Tash Kalar. Demons this time. And that should be it. Look at this cool poppy stuff they put in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't make the one. Let me try it again. Oh, yeah. I will be able to scare my cat good. Okay, let's have a quick look at Tash Kalar first. Uh, Cash Kalar, if you don't know, is a really good abstract game that I quite like. There is a random element to it, especially for beginners, that uh, some people don't find very cool, but I have zero problem with. In fact, why doesn't this come out? I have zero problem with it. In fact, in some ways, ah, there we are, the random element is actually good. Now, it doesn't look like much, because it's just a faction card. Little faction card rules. Some tokens for it. But we do have a new piece. This is the summoning portal, which can actually move... It's a really cool little gem, which can move around the board. Now, the summoning portal can be summoned instead of a uh, level 2 demon. And there's quite a lot of cool demons here. Shadow Imp, Flame Warrior, Gatekeeper. Oh, Demon of Gluttony. Demon of Gluttony may do a combat move. If he destroys a police, upgrade the Gluttony. He may do another combat move. If he destroys another police, Gluttony becomes the Gateway. Well, there you go. So the more he eats, the more powerful he gets. So these are very cool. They've got a lot of cool new abilities. There's no new mythics. I don't think they add mythics in in these faction packs. So you're still using the mythics in the base game. I think every faction pack should have a couple of mythics in it. But uh, yeah, new new expansion for one of my favourite two-player games. Very exciting. Demons this time. Can't go wrong with demons. Now, code names you probably know because uh, it's getting a lot of love from some very popular video bloggers. Uh, basically, it's a very light party game, and it's just you know, like I could probably teach it to you in the two seconds it's going to take me to show you the parts. Basically, uh, cards have. Uh, if I can find some cards. Here we are. These cards have uh, words on them. Star, day, they're double sided. I think there's about 400 cards in total, 200 per side. And then you have these sort of map tiles. And you set the map tile up with these blue and red tiles to create blue, red, neutral, and I think there's a black as well which can kill you. Yeah, there, there it is there. And all you do is then you put these on top of them, and then you call out a word, like say this says string, I could call out cat, and 
cats play with strings, so someone might decide to pick this card. You want to pick the cards that are on the right colours, and that is the end of the game. That's pretty much it. What's interesting is that what you want to do is actually pick the uh, actually pick the colours, uh, pick words that will be able to let people pick more than one clue at once. I say this is string, poison, pyramid, scuba diver. Hmm. Can I think of something that fits all of those things? I don't think so. Not off the top of my head, but a little bit of thinking. Well, there, Aztec and pyramid. You know what I mean? So I could say wonder. I don't know, who knows? The point is that you want to try and get clues that are going to pick up more than one person at once. Instead of, the pick, instead of picking up a single tile, pick up multiple tiles. There's the black, there's the black spy, he kills you. Nasty spy. Very, very cool game. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Pretty much everyone I know who played it has said it's an absolute hit. And if you're wondering why I'm opening a present, I do it all the time when I open birthday presents and game presents. I mean, you know, for mm -hmm. board games. Because I like to open it, bag it, set it up, learn the rules so they can open it on the day. And uh, if they wish, we can just go and play it. So there. Smart asses that you are. Okay, next. This is Taverna. This is for me. You can tell which games are for me. But this is a much lighter game than what I usually buy, and this is because I'm starting to focus more on light games. Not because I don't like the heavy games. I'm still buying them. I mean, I just recently bought Genesis, for example. But I really, I've been really enjoying playing lighter games with uh, my game group at the moment. You know, we're meeting on the we're meeting on weekdays now because the Saturday crew kind of. Uh, split up when people moved away away from the area and because of that we we're meeting on Thursdays which is after work everyone's a bit brain burnt and I found that playing a lighter game just makes the whole day run a bit smoother you can have you know enjoy your friends company more than puzzling over rules okay so this is a very busy board but uh, it's quite simple everything really iconographied very well in this game basically the theme is it's a fantasy world and there's a big party going on in the city and we are pub owners and we have shares in pubs and we want to earn the most points. It's a worker placement game, so you might put humans on blues and orcs go on red or whatever the card says. And you get matching points, like every card will have a different symbol. You can add symbols to pubs as you get greater shares in them and stuff. Very, very simple game, but deceptively there's a lot of there's stuff going on it in it if you know what I mean. This is like a good bridging gap between simple euros to a more complex one. This is a good I reckon this is a good entry point euro from what I know of it. I've only played it once in Vassal. Now, well and that was a prototype as well so the cards have all changed. Very cool game. Uh, it's got fantastic art. I love the theme. It's got this great sort of jokey fantasy theme and oh one of the cool things is you have these sort of uh, VIP patrons right and they're using this method to do the tokens I love this in board games I think more board games should do it it's that and it's got a little white stand stands up looks cool on the board better than maybe a, a wooden token but like ridiculously cheaper compared to having a fantasy flight style plastic mini and I know a lot of people love all the plastic minis, but I'm getting really sick of them. I mean, every single game is just a sea of grey minis, and they all look the same. And unless you spend time painting them, they don't even look that good, in my opinion. But, beautiful. Ready to go. Looks great. And uh, I reckon more games should do this. Or have this, have this, and then sell separately a miniature add-on. That's the way I would do it if I was a publisher. Next! Next, we have the beautiful cards. Okay, let's turn them around. Yeah, so you've got uh, humans. This one's a bard. He likes to read books. Don't know what, oh yeah, that's a drama or something, or, or a show. And just a beer drinker. So bards, readers, showmen, whatever. I don't know if that's what the symbols mean, but there's four different symbols that you've got to match up in bubs. 
This is a either raw card, but beautiful art, very very whimsical, cute art. And then you've got these sort of special spells that you can cast, which cost various resources and some weird purple spells, curses. Anyway, looks like a very cool game. Uh, art's great. Uh, oh, one of the interesting things about this game is the scoring system at the end. I should actually talk about that because it's one of the, the more unique aspects. Basically, in the center of the board, somewhere, yuck. yeah, here we are. In the center of the board, this board appears to be double sided. Oh, yeah, two to three players and uh, four to five on the side, right. So in the center of the board is this master table here and you kind of take tokens off this as you play but when you score the game at the end depending on who is doing the best on these tracks here you get to place your token on here first and score those VP so instead of having like a universal end game scoring like most games you choose your end game scoring and these can be worth quite a lot of points but the thing is once you've chosen it no one else can choose it and all the other ones are open for the next player so you have to be careful you, you might want to take something that doesn't give you the most points but it stops your opponent from getting a massive amount of points very cool little little VP system at the end there that I quite like anyway that's uh, Taverna uh, a light little a light little uh, worker placement game that's actually a little bit heavier than it appears but still you know well into the light side of euros excellent very cool so Taverna code names and Tashkala while I was you know you know while I was doing my editing I noticed that code names is designed by Vlad Chavalta as well and as well I mean Tashkala is him, and Mage Knight, which I'm playing through at the moment, is him. I think he is probably one of the greatest designers in board gaming at the moment, without a doubt. Because not only are all his games absolutely fantastic, like seriously, seriously good, they're also completely different. Like, it's not like you, Rosenberg, or something where every single game is basically the same, but just slightly modified, you know, like Caverna versus a Grigola or whatever. I mean, his games, you wouldn't even, if you didn't know that they were designed by the same person, there's no way you'd pick it. Would you really look at, you know, Space Alert, which I have, which is this weird real-time game, and you think that that's by the same guy who did Dungeon Pets, which is like a hardcore heavy Euro? Or Through the Ages, which is like as hardcore as a heavy Euro can basically get. Or, <laughs> except for, you know, there is Vital now coming out of Portugal. But seriously, man, I mean, this guy, Vlad, you, you are a legend. Seriously, I love your games.